Isn't that seriously like the cutest, most adorable little tiny welder you've ever seen? Yeah, I know this is supposed to be like a macho career and I'm supposed to be like scratching my butt, burping and farting all day long and, you know, cussing up a storm. But I mean, come on, man. If somebody puts one of these in your hand, wouldn't you just be like, oh my God. Awkward moment, I know. All right, check this out. Here's a size comparison. This is my phone, right? This is, this is just so small. It's, it's literally smaller than a toaster. This is like the palm of my hand. I do have large hands, but come on, man. This is, this is just dinky. Right? What could it possibly do? Well, this is exactly how it came about. Here's an email from a guy named Kurt down in Texas. He says, hey, Justin, I absolutely love TFS. Thank you for all you do. It's helped me and a bunch of others that I know out a ton. You're absolutely welcome. Thanks for writing in and uh, you know, thanks for thanking me and all the rest of that good stuff. Plenty more where that came from. I appreciate it. Uh, but either way, I, I know you don't put out a lot of junk. Uh, I know you're very uh, notorious for having some ser uh, serious testing and uh, a lot of evaluation behind the products that you recommend, and therefore I trust you and I appreciate that. But have you ever heard or seen anything about this welder? That would be this one provided in the link from, uh, from Kurt there. Uh, if you have any feedback or any information, uh, I'd love to know about it. Uh, regards, thanks for everything. Regards, Kurt. All right. I looked at this, and it was a picture of like in the palm of somebody's hand, and I was just like, I got to have that. I don't care if it's a piece of junk or not. I got to have that. That is just cool. Let's just get through the intro here. So 100% full disclosure on this video, absolutely no less than any other review or testing video. I have no idea who this Zohan, Zojin, the power of leader, Sultan. I don't, I have no idea who they are. They didn't send me any, this is not their stuff. Um, I couldn't figure out even how to contact them because uh, I do not, uh, I do not speak Mandarin or Cantonese, whichever one dialect this is in. I don't read it. Uh, I don't know anything about it because all of this is not written in English and uh, it doesn't even have very good pictures. I'm assuming this is a warranty registration. I could probably bust out uh, Google Translate and uh, figure that out. This picture makes it look like you got to hook it up to a battery or something. I, I, I seriously, I don't know. But it does include a bag of whatnot. It is very stripped down out of the box. In fact, this. Uh, this uh, 50 amp uh, uh, connector here uh, doesn't come with the machine. I had to rip this off the machine. It does not come with leads. However, it comes with the pieces and parts to make your own leads uh, in the dense style connectors, uh, the really small ones here. Uh, however, I'm not using them because luckily uh, one of my Fronius machines back there has the correct dense style connectors and it works. So the ultimate question out of this one, uh, you know, is it going to work? Well, I can tell you if it's going to work right here out of the box, and that's about as good as it's going to get. So I'm not going to say that this thing is good. I'm not going to say that this thing is bad. I'm going to tell you what I found out of it, and we'll just go from there. So let's actually start with burning some rods. This is technically an arc welder. I'm going to find out if it's going to TIG weld, of course. I'm going to retro something into there. But let's find out if this thing actually burns. And of course, my ultimate test, we got to hit the torture test on this one and find out how many rods it burns. So. Let's just start with that. So I mentioned before, of course, I mean, it doesn't come with anything. You have to actually make it. Uh, so for a hundred bucks, you basically get a machine with some lugs and a power cord, which has no connector on it. So as soon as you get this hooked up, I'm just throwing a little 50 amp connector on here. This is a 240 volt only machine or a 220 volt or whichever one it is, you know. You get it hooked up here and you just realize how small this thing is. Like this is ridiculous. And then you realize again, <laughs> it just, <laughs> it's like, it's like a little toy. But either way, we get somewhere between 23 or 24 amps and 253 amps. It's not the most accurate. Uh, it's very sensitive. Uh, it, just a little tiny touch will knock a few amps here and there, but I'm going to start off on 80 amps, or I think it was like 84, somewhere in that ballpark. This is 7018 rod, uh, 332 diameter. It's, uh, you know, the machine's a little dodgy. It, it, it felt like it was kind of underpowered. Now, I figured it was just me because it's been like, I don't know, almost a decade since I regularly arc welded or stick welded. So I thought maybe it was me, but it was kind of cutting in and out. It was, uh, it seemed a little underpowered. And I was like, yeah, well, maybe that's just typical of the machine. So 
you look into it a little bit, you see some places it's posted with a 40% duty cycle at unknown amount of amperage. The sticker on the top of it's rubbed off. I don't know how many amps it was. So I think it was like somewhere around 130, 140 amps or so at like 40 to 60%. And that means that essentially burning all these rods back to back like I'm doing now uh, continuously, it should cut out after about two and a half rods. So it takes about a minute and a half to burn each one of them. So 40%, 60%, two and a half, three rods, somewhere in there should be cutting out. But the only problem was is uh, it wasn't. It just kept on going and going and going and going. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was, it's just kind of ridiculous to see this machine just keep on going rod after rod after rod. Like, I'm kind of impressed at this point, <laughs> you know, so I just kept on pushing it. How many could I do until it shuts down or which one of us is going to go dead first? Because it was about 100, I think it was about 102 degrees inside the shop. And now here I am cooking the crap out of this plate just one rod after another and uh, I mean it was getting hot so on Instagram and Facebook I said how many rods do you think it was gonna it was gonna do or how many it was gonna burn and you know what to be honest with you I don't know how many it's gonna go until it shut down because I had to stop I was just saturated and cooked and everybody's laughing at me and I'm like I give up forget this 12 rods that's how many it did before I stopped however therein lies the problem you know what, let's just move on to TIG. That's what everybody was asking me when I posted up about this. Will it TIG? Well, here's the answer to that. Virtually every single arc welder in existence will absolutely 100% TIG weld. There's virtually nothing stopping it because the process is nearly identical, or at least as far as the amperage, voltage, all the rest of that good stuff is concerned. Any arc welder out there will light a TIG torch if you retrofit it. So, I literally grabbed a hold of my Feronius TIG torch and I retrofitted it. A little bit ghetto, but I made it work because I don't have an adapter lug for anything else that fits. So, check this out. Now, at a bare minimum, to make a TIG torch work on an arc welder, you need some sort of argon supply and you need some electrical connection. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use my Fronius uh, through-style dense connector, so I'll just plug the argon line into the back of the dense connector, leave a little bit exposed, and clamp on one of my jumper cables to the remaining section of that dense connector right there. Then I'm going to go over to the machine, and I'm just going to throw one of these lugs in here that was supplied with it, and we're going to set it up in electrode negative, meaning that the torch is on the negative side, the earth lead or the clamp is on the positive side. So I'll connect my jumper cable <laughs> to the negative side, throw the earth lead into the positive side, and then we'll turn down our amperage. Now I'm going to go about 100 amps on this one because we're welding some 8th inch material, so don't want to go too crazy. Now the argon is controlled manually, so don't forget to shut it off when you're, uh, when you're finished with it. We'll give ourselves a quick little scratch or a lift start on this one, and off we go. But, we have an issue. And it's, uh, it was weird. It was very weird. I'm just literally kind of shocked here and stumped of why is it just sitting here doing nothing at 100 amps. This doesn't make sense because, I mean, 100 amps is more than enough to, to burn this thing up, to get moving on it. And they just, I'm literally just waiting for it. And that's kind of a problem. I was so confused. So I decided to kill the arc off there and just uh, take a minute to really think about this one because it just absolutely no part of that made sense. So I figured, you know what, let's just do what anybody else will do. Let's turn it all the way up to 11. 253 amps displayed on the machine. Give it a light. Here we go. Well, now we're moving. Now we're cooking. But we should be blowing holes in this thing at 250 amps. My torch should be melting at 250 amps. But look at this. It's nice, crisp, smooth. Something is definitely not right. But then it hit me. Trust it. Now, let's literally just break this down into uh, what we have here up to this point. We know that we can retrofit a TIG torch to it. It actually produces, it welds, but maybe you saw the problem in there. Of course, I didn't mention it on voiceover. And then you might have even noticed that I was having a hard time when I first started on the uh, stick welding, and I thought maybe that was just me because it's been decades since I've done this. But every time I turned it up, it started getting better and better and better, but unrealistically at 140 amps on a 332 rod on some eighth inch plate, something wasn't right about that. Well, the problem was actually unearthed completely in TIG because you cannot hide it, especially from a guy who TIG welds all the time. When I started that up at 100 amps, it was pushing like rotten slow, like rotten low amperage. It was just absolutely awful. The reason why? 
What is displayed on that is actually something I would probably call half amps. That would be the display on there. So quite literally, it displays 100 amps. It's actually welding at 50. And when you get up to, let's say, you know, 140 amps, where I was burning the 332 pretty well, uh, the, the sticks or the rods there, the electrodes, the 332 electrodes, the, the, you know, they were burning fine at 140 amps, but they were actually pushing out like 70-ish, you know, somewhere in there. And that's why they were burning a little bit better. Still a little bit, you know, a tiny bit too low, but, you know, hey, whatever. I'm not, not really an arc welder much anymore these days. But, you know, once you get onto the TIG, I put it to 100 amps, it's pushing 50. I put it to 250 amps, there's 125 needed to weld an eighth inch coupon together. That's the problem. So instead of being plus one, yeah, for the little guy, it's more like divide by two and you get, oh, well, that's a lot less than 250 amps. So what do I actually think about this little $98 TIG toaster? Uh, well, it's a novelty. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know what, other than just having a paperweight or something cool to uh, throw on the desk and talk about or anything like that, you know, that's that's about all it's worth to me. It's a, it's a, it's a hundred dollar conversation piece. It's a novelty welder. It's like the, like the cheapo turbos you get on eBay, you know, it looks like a Garrett but performs like a, well, nothing. It might make it a mile. Either way you slice it, I mean, it, it's... It's, it's fun, it's cool, it's just, it's unique to have, but that's about all it's worth. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to be looking this up, so I'll post the link in the description below, but I'm going to tell you flat out, it does not get my recommendation as anything other than a novelty item. Because it's, uh, you know, while it does work, I'm, I'm sure it's not going to work very long. And, uh, yeah, that whole amperage, 250 amps divided by 2 equals output is just kind of ridiculous. I mean, it's the... Let's face it, it's a $100 welder, right? Maybe as a backup welder or something you could use it. I don't know. But either way, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to thank you guys for watching, as always. If you need to get in contact with us, you can always hit us up on the FabricationSeries.com website, just like Kurt down in Texas did to get this whole thing reviewed. Uh, you can also hit us up on Instagram at the.fabricator, Facebook.com slash the Fabricator Series. And that is going to do it for me. Make sure that you're subscribed and you ring that bell, and we'll go on from there. So we'll see you guys on the next episode. I think I'll, what? No, I'll just, I'll just throw it up here. I mean, it's a, put $100 in the trash, I don't know. It's whatever. <laughs> Zoltan. <laughs> I'm done.